So my name is Celeste Lynn Paul. Um, I am part of the KDE Usability Project. And as Troy said, I am also involved with uh, Kubuntu. And today, I'd like to talk a little bit about design patterns. And uh, we've code patterns a little bit in there, because most of you are developers, and you're very familiar with code patterns. And design patterns are very similar. And hopefully, we'll be able to draw some parallels in an abstract way to, to get you thinking about, about design a little bit differently that can help you uh, create more usable and more consistent software. And so uh, some of the things that I'll be talking about today um, just what is a pattern, very basic, and I really only have about 30 minutes, so we'll see how much we get through. I'm known for having very long presentations. Um, just reviewing patterns in code, uh, patterns in design, and then specifically looking at examples of uh, design patterns in KDE. Um, design patterns are also a good way to get involved in KDE, and so we'll talk a little bit about that and then some questions. So first, let's talk about what a pattern is. And a pattern is any recurring object or element in a set, so you have multiple objects that create a larger object almost, which re may repeat, it's not necessary for it to repeat, in a predictable manner. And patterns are found all over in everything, not just software, but in our, our everyday lives. We have patterns in design, in our clothing. Uh, we have patterns in the way we lay things out, in the way we design things, in the way we build things. So it's a, just a very abstract concept that we use to describe things that repeat that we recognize. Because as humans, it's very easy for us to recognize patterns. And we really gravitate towards trying to recognize patterns in a lot of noise. So many of you are very familiar with patterns in code. Uh, data structures, something that's very basic that you learn in uh, for some of the first things that you learn in computer science are basically patterns for how to solve certain problems. So you have patterns for sorting. You have patterns for storage. You have patterns for retrieval, those sorts of things. Those can be considered patterns. Um, also, code libraries, they're collections of uh, repeated procedures, and those procedures can be patterns. Um, so you don't need to repeat them, or they might be the best example of how to solve a cer certain problem. And so rather than trying to re-solve that problem each time that you build, build a new piece of software, you use libraries, you use those patterns rather than recreating them. And then functions and classes on a smaller level tend to solve patterns so that you can uh, reuse them over and over and over again. And in design, it's very much the same way. Uh, designers like to take what we've learned um, and try to use it over again. A lot of uh, the same way that developers use code over and over again, especially with the way that you've learned how to solve particular problems. And specifically, a design pattern is a recurring set of widgets, functionality, or interaction, so any of those things for uh, in user interface software, which are found throughout the software environment and across the, uh, and across the environment. So you might find patterns within a single piece of software. You might find patterns within the entire piece of software. You might find patterns that occur in different pieces of software that are all combined together. And so some examples of patterns that you might see uh, might be uh, a pattern for how you have a uh, open a file dialog or a save file dialog. And I realize that these screens aren't actually very large, so it's kind of hard to see. This is actually the open file dialog for Firefox, which is, the, I think, the GTK version, which is very different from what we do in KDE, which you see here in Ocular. And then this other one is actually I think it's the cute one for open office. And so you can see these two are very familiar. And if you open any uh, Windows software, these two uh, examples of what an open file dialog might look like. Yes? Actually, the open office is KDE already. Oh, it's still KDE? OK, I wasn't sure because it, it, it's different. <laughs> the layout is the same. It's following a similar pattern. But there are exceptions for whatever reason. Uh, I'm a des designer, not a developer, so some of these things I don't know. Um, but you can see it follows a similar pattern where the, uh, the Firefox version is laid out very differently in multiple ways. Another example would be search. And so we have multiple examples of search in KDE. And this, this should, I think this is using the same class in um, 
all three of these applications, but the exceptions are a little bit different. They're designed a little bit different. They have certain options uh, that are added in one and not in the other. So for example, you have uh, Ocular. On the left, you have Next, Previous, and Options, which is, oh, actually it's the same one as Conquer. So they're sharing a pattern across that. And then in um, Dolphin, you have just the search, just the search bar, but you don't have the next and previous and options because those options aren't necessary. But you can see a very similar pattern across, uh, I lost it. You know, I never do transitions, and of course I have to screw it up this time, right? There we go. And you can still see a pattern where you have the close button for that part of the panel. You have the label, which is filter, and then you have the input box. So these are all the same pattern, even though they're not exactly the same, which is something that you need that uh, I'll talk about a little bit, because there are certain elements that make whatever the pattern is, but the pattern itself might not need to be exactly the same. So if you have a pattern that's square triangle, square triangle that you're using as a background, well, if the triangle is transposed or maybe you're using a small triangle, big square, you still recognize the pattern because it has uh, recognizable elements used in some way that's repeated. And so that's the same way here in design. And so patterns are definitely a good thing. Uh, they help create consistency in the environment. And once you design a pattern for, say, usability or whatever else, then if you use that pattern over and over again in the environment, then you can ensure you know, usability or anything else in the other software that share that same pattern. And so it's almost designing something once rather than having to go through uh, different pieces of software that have the same problem and redesigning it over and over and over again. It also helps uh, users learn the software better because once you learn a particular pattern or a particular interaction or a particular way to do something in software, then they can reapply that knowledge to other pieces of software, making that other piece of software easier to use because there's no more learning curve. And basically, uh, we need more patterns. Uh, some of you might be familiar with the Human Interface Guidelines, which is a project that's been very difficult to get through KDE, but Gnome's HIG is very popular. However, Gnome's HIG is, they have a much greater need for it because in uh, GTK, they have to control everything manually. The layout is very difficult. Anytime you create a GTK uh, application, you have to manually set a lot of sizes, spaces, fonts, colors, that sort of thing. Where in KDE, we don't need to worry about that stuff as much. And so we need to focus more on the high level patterns in describing how to do some of these more uh, complex interactions rather than worrying about creating documentation for laying out widgets whenever we have libraries that do that automatically for us. And so I'm going to talk about two, let's see my time here. Yeah, I'm going to talk about two examples of um, patterns that have been worked on a little bit in KDE, and then a little bit about um, how if you're looking for an interesting project or maybe you're new to KDE and you want a smaller project to try contributing to, how you can do that. So KDE Hot New Stuff, uh, some of you who might follow my work might uh, remember this discussion from I think it was July or this past summer whenever I talked about this. Um, KDE Hot New Stuff is a service that allows you to uh, download content from the internet. Uh, KDE Look is one of the examples. And uh, add content to the environment. So if you have games, downloading new puzzles. If you want uh, new backgrounds, downloading new backgrounds, new icons, new themes, that sort of thing. It's a, a really great service in order to uh, try new things and, and uh, customize your environment. <clears throat> However, the way to actually use this functionality in the environment is extremely inconsistent. So internally, there's a class that's KNS that plugs into um, uh, the, the framework and it'll go and pull whatever t uh, content that you want. But the actual front end it, it isn't controlled by anything. Developers actually have to put the button, put the label, and put whatever icon that they want. And as a result, the same functionality is displayed many different ways in KDE. So this is the Plasma uh, desktop settings dialog. And uh, so you have one button that says new theme, which opens up the KNS dialog. And then you have another button that says get new wallpapers, which opens up the KNS dialog. 
So two different content, but the same exact KNS dialog. Then we also have, in system settings, you can download new mode icons for you know, whatever uh, applications. And this uses an icon that says get new themes. Uh, KGrub editor just says get new, and this is actually for downloading new backgrounds for your uh, KGrub splash. Um, this is Kate. You can download uh, download highlighting file templates, and this actually omits the get or down get part, which you saw in the other building or other buttons. And this says download highlighting files. And so, if you weren't already familiar with this functionality, you probably would not be able to guess that this is actually KNS pulling uh, user generated content. And then this is the add widgets dialog in Plasma which uh, uses you know, KNS, and the first one says download new Plasma widgets, and then the other one says install widgets from local file, blah, 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 installing widgets from local file is fine. But again, the language here, download Plasma widgets, is this going to use KNS or not? And so uh, to de deconstruct sort of what some of the issues were, you ha we, there were three objects that we had to consider in the design. So there's an icon, and there's a specific KNS um, icon. If you go look into look in the oxy oxygen icons, it's actually KNS.png. There's some label that you have to put on the button. Uh, most of them say get new, and then whatever the thing is. But we've seen download, we've seen only get, we've seen, you know, different sorts of things. And then there's the actual button, which is the object for the interaction. And so there's just talking about the specification a little bit, and this might seem redundant as I'm going through some of these examples, but actually part of the design process is uh, trying to pull out all of these different elements in order to fully understand what the problem is. So the icon, we have an icon, we have to do something with an icon. It's on every button, it's always going to be in the same place, so that's something important to know. The label language has to be consistent, so we have to come up with some type of guideline or, uh, or uh, account for it in the, the code so that the label is the same, so we don't have download something in one case and then get something in another case and then just the object in another case. So it should always begin with get new. It should include the thing that you're going to fetch so people know exactly what they're going to download. And then also an ellipsis, which is just a technical um, mark from the uh, HIG that we have. And then also the button is the method of the interaction. It's not an icon, it's not a link, it's not anything else. We should be using a button consistently. There were no cases of KNS being invoked by a link that I found, but actually specifying that will hopefully keep people from using link with at least without like good reason. <clears throat> And so some examples would be, so here's our new theme and get new wallpapers. Uh, two problems with this. One, the it's same service, two completely different labels, and then it also doesn't have the icon. And so there would be an example of fixing both the buttons um, with KGrub. Instead of get new, it would actually be get new images, so on and so forth. So download highlighting files, get new highlighting themes. As you can see, some of the buttons, the language starts to get longer and longer depending on what you're downloading. And so part of the specification was also trying to figure out how we can create a shortened version of the button and still get this point across. And it's not necessarily that um, you always have to uh, tell people or let people know what they're downloading um, or that it's get new. Uh, the icons, so the actual star on the button is pretty recognizable and as long as it's used consistently, we might be able to just use the, the, the icon with a tooltip um, or just get new with a tooltip if we need to shorten the button label. And so um, another thing, there we go. Uh, another thing, uh, Jeremy Whiting was actually working with me on, on this and he did a good job of uh, cleaning, uh, cleaning up the class a little bit and we wrote down some of these ideas that we had, but one of the problems actually creating the class that would control this interface pattern was in the translations. Originally what we wanted to do was have uh, get new and that would be a string that would be translated in multiple languages, but then also have the object which would be a different string that would be uh, translated in multiple objects so that uh, the get new part would only need to be translated for the class, but then the object that you were actually getting would be controlled 
controlled by or would be in the application's translations. Unfortunately, in a lot of languages, uh, the agreement for something like get new depends on what the object is and you know you have a male female agreement and a singular plural agreement that sort of thing so it ended up being uh, a little bit more difficult than what we had hoped but we did manage to add the icon to the button class so that you can't it, as long as you use the can as class you will always have the icon on there so a slight improvement, not exactly what we were going for, but this discussion in the environment has at least uh, helped developers become aware of you know, labeling conventions and how consistency in labeling affects the environment. So hopefully that's a good thing. Uh, rich information lists, let me just check my time. Okay. So rich information lists is something that uh, we were actually working in detail a couple years ago. Um, but it sort of faltered because it's actually a much, much, much more difficult problem than the KNS uh, button. So the KNS button, we basically had an icon, a button, and a label, and the label was pretty uh, easy to figure out. It, in general, it's a very simple pattern. The rich information list actually is, is much more difficult. So here's an example of a list. And so to define a rich information list, you have a list. And a list is just a list of data. Rich information lists are lists of multiple pieces of data put together into one object. And so for example, this is a, a list of, this is an, a screenshot from a list of uh, the plasma add widgets dialog. And so you have an icon, you have a label, you have a description, you have a information button, but then you also have an action button, which is the little star with the minus. Um, this is from system settings whenever you're choosing mouse themes. So you have a, uh, a label, a description, and an icon. But as you can see, um, with the, in the plasma widgets list, the, the label is larger than the description text, where in the, um, in, the, in the second screenshot, the label and the description are the same font size. Admittedly, this is probably not something that somebody who's not a designer would pick out, uh, but it is an inconsistency. It's not going to cause anybody to not be able to use the interface, but it's you know, one of those polish, it, polish issues that you should really pay more attention to. Um, so this is in, I forget what application this is from, actually. This might be from Copedi, some of their plugins, accessibility plugins. So you have uh, the icon, you have the label, you have the description, but then you have a big space between the, the label and the description. You have some action buttons, but you, as you can see from the plasma list, the information or the about is, is displayed differently, and they're using buttons rather than icons in order to invoke actions. And then it also has ex an extra widget, uh, which is the checkbox on the left-hand side in order to be able to enable it or make a selection, which uh, I don't have all the examples here, but in some cases, the checkbox was to enable it, and in other cases, it was to make a, a multiple selection. And so whenever you have more complex interactions like this and they're inconsistent, uh, that can cause a lot of confusion in the environment. Um, this is in kickoff where you have the um, you have the icon, you have the the label, the label's larger than the description text, but the description text is also not the same color as the label. This is a dolphin, um, same thing where the, uh, the label and the description are the same size, but the description is not the same color as the label. And there's also way different sizes of uh, what icons are actually used. This is in KRunner, same thing with the selection, but this time they're using just the information icon uh, inside a button, but it doesn't say about. So I think so far we've seen three different ways to show information about something. And this is actually the KNS uh, dialog where you see um, the install button, but the install button actually has a uh, icon on it, and then you have the the description, but the description is multiple lines, and there's a lot of variability. And essentially, if you think about this in an abstract term, all of these are all of these are lists, and they all do the same thing. They just have different information. They all have icons. Uh, they all have some type of label for whatever object it is that they're they're representing. Some of them have descriptions. I think in most cases they had a description. Some of them were one line, some of them were two lines, some of them were multiple lines and cut off, but that's 
besides the point, they have some type of description. And then th some of them also had actions, uh, whether it is to you know, select or deselect or enable or to provide supplemental information or to invoke some type of action. There, there was some other type of interaction besides making the selection of the object. And this was something that we actually couldn't complete very easily. Um, so with the icon, you had to consider size and location. And that was a little bit difficult because uh, in some cases, such as Dolphin, you can increase the size of the icons or decrease the size of the icons, however you want to configure it. But then the label and the description text would stay the same. So how do you configure what a happy ratio between what the default size of the icon and you know, the font size in the list should be? Um, the label size, color, and location. Uh, most of the objects that I showed there um, <clears throat> Uh, I'll had you know the label in some place and then the description, but how much should the spacing be? Because in some cases you might want more spacing, in some cases you might not want it. Um, should the label be bigger than the description? Should it be the same color of, as, the, as the description? And if we get into the description, well, should the description be smaller or the same size, or should it be you know one lines, two lines? Should it be a lighter color? And if you look at individual applications, you might be able to make cases for well. In in this case, it does make sense that the description be a lighter color, but as you start using these patterns over and over and over again in the environment, and the patterns start breaking down because they no longer look the same, then they, uh, to the user, they're no longer going to be the same, uh, same patterns. And so uh, if you expect people to use certain elements over and over and over again, but they're not, it might be because they don't seem to be the same elements anymore. Uh, in actions, the types, uh, what types of actions should we allow in lists like these, and then also the location. Uh, some of them, some of the buttons were on the right hand side, but what if they were underneath the description or in the description area? Or what if they were on the left? Are there any cases or any reasons why we would want to do that? <clears throat> And so we actually, we couldn't solve this problem because the problem is so big. Uh, and we were trying to contact all the applications that had some of these problems and talk to them about why they made certain design decisions so that we could fully understand both the, you know, on the code side, maybe they have to put you know, the checkbox on the left-hand side, and they can't possibly put a checkbox on the right-hand side for whatever reason. Um, but there are just so many applications that do this that in the end, we're always going to have to make a recommendation and wait for people to complain about it so that we can revise it, which is a, it, 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 that's a really difficult way of, of going about things, but it seems like that's the, the last resort, which is why I'm, you know, talking about patterns and why we need more of them. So hopefully I will be able to get some participation from some of you guys. So, uh, and here's some examples of just fixing the alignment and fixing the labels so they're consistent uh, and fixing the position of the buttons. And so uh, even though, and I, I don't know if you remember what these three things might have looked like before, these are mock-ups, they're not actually the fixed versions. You can see that just making sure that the icon Icons are the same size throughout the environment, making sure the spacing is all the same, uh, making sure that the uh, title and the description are the same. Even though all three of these examples have slightly different elements, um, so one is just a simple list, one has install button, the other one has checkboxes, you can already see at least compare them for, to some of the bad examples that I showed you, how much just fixing the description and the title and the icon and making them fit together make these three things look more related than the other ones before. And so now I think users would be able to expect, uh, be able to reuse a lot of the knowledge that they had previously uh, gathered from you know, using this list before in different applications. So as I've been harping on, getting involved in uh, KDE or if you're interested in HCI or design, uh, patterns make a great class project or even a side project for some of you guys who aren't in uh, school anymore. It's a well-defined project, it's relatively small. You pick one pattern or one uh, small problem and try to fix it. You can uh, start from the very beginning of the design process or take somebody else's design and try to create a code class out of it. 
Um, and it's a relatively an interesting problem to solve, just finding all of these different inconsistencies in the environment and deconstructing all the elements and putting them back together in a consistent way. I mean, I think it's interesting because I'm a designer, but I think that type of just deconstruction and reconstruction of a problem, regardless if it's you know a visual element or if it's code, is, is interesting to any engineer. Um, as I said, it's a chance to do a HCI or usability project, but it's still a development project. Um, it's also a way to learn KDE Libs because each of these things touch on different things. So with KNS, you were dealing with specific classes. Um, with lists, you would be uh, you know, working with different things. If you're using uh, actions, you would have to deal with that sort of thing. Um, so Anyway, that's my spiel. I had to take out some details because I know we're running a little bit late, but that's probably good because I can go on and on and on about this stuff. Uh, does anyone have any questions about maybe? I, I see some nodding heads. The question is about exactly the icons in text. Uh -huh. It's like the most wanted question for my management during the last nine years. Every new distribution they ask, can I fix the text? Be below the icon, how do you decide the icon? Should I put dots? Yeah. Every time they ask the same thing and we've never been able to fix properly. There's some way to do that? I, I, I don't know because that sounds like a technical question, but... No, no, actually, no. I mean... I think even some design way to make this would look better than have the problem. Well, yeah, and that, that would be going through and actually just creating one generic pattern to figuring out the icon and whether it's, I, it, I think there was one screenshot and I didn't point it out where, well, there are multiple screenshots. In some cases, the icon, so you have a box that contains your elements. And you, if, uh, if you're familiar with HTML and CSS positioning, you know that you know there's top, there's center, and then there's the bottom alignment and whatever your box is. In some cases, the icon and the title would be aligned to the top. In some cases, the icon would be aligned to the middle of the box, and the icon would be aligned to the top. And again, those types of details, it's it's hard to see unless you know what to look for. And because I'm a designer, those are the things that I pick out for. But those are the inconsistencies. And the, I, I think, I hope I'm answering your question. Uh, if we can just design you know, a generic pattern for things, then you would be able to, to figure out, you know, well, should I put, where should I put this label? Should it be on the, the top? Should it be in the middle? Should it be underneath? If I need to do it underneath, should it be centered? Should it be left aligned? Should it be, you know, five pixels underneath? That sort of thing. So, and, uh, and any time you want to do something new, it's always, well, we, we don't have a class for it, so I'm going to just make something up, rather than, well, we have a class for it, and this is how it's supposed to look like. And then, if the class doesn't suit your needs, then you can start thinking about new creative ways of, of designing things, rather than every single time reinventing the wheel, when all you want to do is create a list. You don't care what it looks like. Yes. Basically, uh, what you seem to be saying is that uh, there should be a set of standardized high-level layout libraries being developed for KD, which basically uh, will kind of dictate uh, and, and kind of force these patterns on the other Yeah, and, and it's not so much, I, I wouldn't use the word force as much as, as help. Another one of the, the patterns that we tried really hard to uh, get to work that it was just it, the KNS pattern was really easy because there's one developer who was maintaining all of KNS, and so I only had one person to work with. Where you know any application that has a list is somebody that I need to contact. Another thing is uh, the creating creating a list from a bucket of objects. Um, like for a toolbar editor, you have a, a list of all the possible items that you can have on a toolbar, and then you have the master list that you're trying to build. And I think it, that same widget is used in, or a similar widget is used in KML, where you have a list of filters and you can build a filter. I think we found like four or five different ways that you can build lists. So the arrows that you use to pull and push items over were in different positions. The add or save or the new buttons were in different positions. The reordering buttons were in different positions. That is something that. Uh, there should be one way that we do it all throughout KDE, but 
going through all the software and figuring out all the different exceptions that they have and then trying to f talk to the developers and figure out why they made these different decisions. It's, it, we're a very small team and we, there are other things that we also hopefully try to get done, but um, I, I definitely think that these, solving these types of problems and, and creating classes for them is the easiest way for developers to, to fix it. Uh, Will, you had a question? Well, why don't we have more time to solve all these problems? Like, I, I wrote one of these two lists, left, right, up, down, set up to myself, um, and rich information lists. Why don't we have a okay, rich information list view? Um, that is a good question. Uh, I, probably because someone hasn't written it. I, I, I mean, uh, and it, it's it's a chicken it's a chicken and egg problem because you 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 go and you see oh I want to create a list of things and you either don't recognize that this pattern reoccurs and so you should go look for a class or you do do go look for a class and realize there isn't a class so that means you need to create your own new class. It, it's you know we and this is something that. That we just need to get you know ten well-rounded developers in a room for a weekend and say here are five patterns that we really 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 could use in KDE. Let's let's do them and let's code them because I, it's the backend stuff and all the logic is is what's hard about well uh, layout is relatively easy compared to some other things that that you can program and so you know putting a bunch of widgets together that some other developer plugs into their application I I mean I'm not a developer but that sounds easy in in theory so <laughs> it's it's just that nobody's done it and so you either look for it and it's not there or because it's not there you don't think to look for it so I actually have a question yes uh, do you often get developers coming to you ahead of time before they're designing an object to say, hey, uh, I need something to do this and I don't know how I want it to look or how I want it to work? Does that happen? So in a perfect world, everybody would be starting from scratch, and they would go through the entire user-centered design process, you know, thinking about their users, what the functionality is, planning out, you know, their models, that sort of thing. Almost everything that we deal with in KDE is um, maintenance, and so very few, th there are very few interfaces that go through a complete redesign where you throw everything away and start from scratch. So most of the time it will be something that a develop that a develop one developer of one application will will be like, "Wow, this has been bothering me for years and I was thinking about moving this button around or doing this or doing that. What do you think?" And you know, I'll work with them there, but because it's one developer, one application, I don't know if that pattern exists somewhere else because I don't have, you know, this omniscient knowledge of 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 every interface in, in KDE. And so I could be fixing something in one case that is great for that case, but if adjusted, could be used in three other cases just because we're not, we're not operating that way. Okay. We've got one minute, so. An academic, project that, um, an academic project that comes to mind would be writing um, code to locate those kind of patterns so that you wouldn't need to have it all in your head, but you could write a, a testing. <laughs> Where is something that follows these kinds of That would be, uh, that sounds like a dissertation actually, because that would involve a, a lot of heuristics, and, and something like that would be uh, ridiculously awesome to be able to go through and find inconsistencies and in patterns, because really, we, even with all the intelligent systems and AI that we have available to us, only humans are able to recognize patterns in anything besides even numbers and data that computers still require you know the human touch like humans are built to recognize patterns and so if even getting software that gets halfway that says oh this might be a risk that would be great but, yeah, yeah so but uh, I think my time is up so thank you very much